dear students today we will be discussing on single phase induction motor mainly the double field revolving theory and the equivalent circuit of single phase induction motor single phase induction motors are mainly used for low power applications where we have only a single phase supply that is available mainly it is used for domestic industrial and commercial applications we have the applications such as fans blowers washing machines food mixers compressors pumps conveyors power tools like drills and press office machinery dairy machinery woodworking machinery small farming machinery etc and the power rating will be normally less than 1 hp even when we have so many applications for single phase induction motor there are many disadvantages in the case of single phase induction motor when we compare the same with three phase induction motor three phase induction motors were inherently self starting but single phase induction motors are not inherently self starting the operating power factor is very low and the efficiency is very less and the starting torque is very low in the case of single phase induction motor when we compare single phase induction motor with three phase induction motor for the same frame size and for the temperature rise the output is very less only around 50 percent is in the case of single phase induction motor when it is compared with three phase induction motor we will consider the constructional details of single phase induction motor we have stator rotor as well as air gap on the stator side the motor will be having a core which will be accommodating a single phase distributed winding and the winding will be provided or it will be wound for a particular number of poles depending on the speed that is required and on the rotor side it will be of cage rotor as we had in the case of three phase induction motor squirrel cage type and normally the air gap between the rotor and stator is of the order of 0.5 to 1 mm it was already mentioned that when we compare single phase induction motor with three phase induction motor one of the main disadvantages is single phase induction motors are not self starting in order to understand the working principle of single phase induction motor we will have to understand double revolving field theory the ferrari's principle is that any alternating flux can be represented as two phases of half the magnitude and rotating in opposite directions with the same synchronous speed let us now consider a flux which is having the maximum magnitude as 5m and the first figure that is given we have the horizontal flux plus 5m we can resolve the flux 5m into two components a and b with a magnitude of 5m divided by 2 one of the components a to b rotating in anti clockwise direction or in counter clockwise direction and the component b having the same magnitude 5m divided by 2 rotating in clockwise direction at the instant that is shown in the first figure a and b are in phase and having magnitude 5m divided by 2 so the sum of a and b in the same direction with a total magnitude of 5m we will consider another instant where a and b have rotated in anti clockwise direction and clockwise direction respectively from the horizontal direction and the displacement is theta that is plus theta and minus theta respectively for a and b 
we can find that by phasor sum the resultant of a and b will be 2 phi m divided by 2 cos 2 theta divided by 2 that is equal to phi m cos theta itself. The same is shown in the second figure having a displacement of theta from the horizontal direction for A and B in clockwise and anti-clockwise directions and the resultant is phi m cos theta itself. We will now consider another instant given us in the first figure. So the phases A and B have rotated by an angle 90 degree in anti-clockwise direction and clockwise direction respectively. The magnitude is same phi m divided by 2 itself and at that condition the phasor sum is equal to 0 because they are in phase opposition with the same magnitude. So when theta is equal to 90 degree by substituting in the same equation phi m sin theta we get the magnitude equal to 0. In the second figure the angle of rotation for A and B is 180 degree and we can find the magnitude is same phi m divided by 2 and the phasor sum of A and B will be equal to minus phi m. So by substituting 180 in the equation phi m cos theta we get the resultant equal to minus phi m itself. In the last figure that is the third figure the angle of rotation for A and B is taken as 270 degree and we have A and B in phase opposition with the same magnitude and the resultant will be equal to 0 and we can consider the resultant to be having the same equation phi m cos theta and by substituting theta equal to 270 we get the resultant to be equal to 0 itself. From the analysis of two vectors a and B rotating in opposite direction having the same magnitude of phi m divided by 2 we can find that the resultant will be having an equation phi m cos theta. For an angular position theta of 0 to 360 degree we have plotted the waveform and we can find it to be the cosine wave. We will consider the clockwise direction to be the forward direction and anti-clockwise or counter-clockwise direction to be the backward direction. And when we consider the slip of B, the phasor, we can find SF, the forward slip is equal to NS minus N divided by NS that is equal to S. So SF is equal to S. Consider the case of the vector A. We have the backward rotating flux corresponding to the vector. And for the same, we can write the slip. That is SB is equal to minus NS minus N divided by minus NS. And we can find SB is equal to 2 minus S. Here the speed is taken as minus ns because it is rotating in anti-clockwise direction. So whenever we are providing a sinusoidal supply to the stator winding of a single phase induction motor, there will be a varying flux that is produced and will be having two components, one which is rotating in counterclockwise direction and another rotating in clockwise direction. From these two flux, we will have to consider two torques. That is, when these clockwise and counterclockwise rotating fluxes are cut by the rotor conductors, there will be corresponding EMF and the current, which will be resulting in torques. One will be a forward torque and the other one will be backward torque. One will be in the counterclockwise direction and the other will be in clockwise direction. So the resultant flux 
given as TR will be the phasor sum of forward flux and backward flux. That is TR is equal to TF plus TB. When we are discussing the three phase induction motor, we had found that the developed power that is PD is equal to 1 minus S divided by S into I2 square R2. That is per phase developed power. The same is applicable in the case of single phase induction motor also. And we have the equation 2 pi nt divided by 60 is equal to PD. And from that we can write this TD. The torque developed is equal to PD into 60 divided by 2 pi n. We have n is equal to ns into 1 minus s. By substituting both, we get TD is equal to 60 divided by 2 pi ns into I2 square R2 divided by s. That is equal to 1 by omega s I2 square R2 divided by s. Where omega s is equal to 2 pi ns divided by 60 or 2 pi f. Now we will have to consider the forward torque as well as the backward torque. That is Tf is equal to 1 by omega s i2 square r2 divided by 2sf. That is equal to 1 by omega s i2 square r2 divided by 2s. For forward torque we will have to consider the forward slip that is sf that is equal to s. And we have backward torque. Tb is equal to 1 by omega s i2 square r2 divided by 2 sb. Instead of s, we will have to consider sb. That is equal to 1 by omega s i2 square r2 divided by 2 into 2 minus s. Because sb is equal to 2 minus s. So in the torque slip characters that is given, we have considered both forward torque and the backward torque. In the continuous line, the top one is the forward torque and the bottom one is the backward torque and the curve 3 is given as the resultant torque. At starting condition, that is when the slip S is equal to 1, from the equation we can find the forward torque and the backward torque caused by the forward field and the backward field will be equal in magnitude but in opposite direction because of the same the resultant torque TR will be equal to zero. That is why a single phase induction motor is not a self-starting one. Suppose the rotor of the machine is given a sufficient push in any one of the directions and by which the slip of the machine is no longer equal to 1. There will be a resultant torque because S is not equal to 1. If the push that is given is sufficient enough to overcome the load torque and the frictional torque, then the machine will continue to run in the same direction and will be picking up the speed. So at standstill condition, with a single phase supply that is provided to the normal or a plain single phase induction motor, it will not be a self-starting one. But the rotor is given a sufficient push in any one of the directions. It will continue to rotate in the same direction and will be picking up the speed. Now we will discuss the equivalent circuit of a single phase induction motor. Most of the single phase induction motors are started as two phase motor and for running it will be operating as single phase induction motor itself. The equivalent circuit will be developed on the basis of double revolving field theory and we will be making an assumption that the rotating fluxes that is forward and backward rotating fluxes will be acting on two imaginary rotates which will be rotating in opposite directions. 
So the equivalent circuit will be a combination of two rotor circuits. One will be considered with respect to the forward field and the other will be considered with respect to the backward field. Here the figure shown is the equivalent circuit at standstill condition. R1 and X1 are the parameters of the stator. R2 dash and X2 dash are the parameters of rotor referred to the stator as we had in the case of three phase induction motor as well as in the case of transformers referring the secondary to the primary and we have the parallel branch with elements R0 and XM which corresponds to the no load condition. A standstill condition considering double revolving field theory the circuit corresponding to the forward and backward rotates are identical because the slip is equal to 1. Hope you remember the equivalent circuit in the case of three phase induction motor. When we are referring the resistors onto the stator side from the rotor side, we were having the time as R2 dash divided by S. Here for forward rotating rotor, we will have to consider R2 dash divided by S. And for backward rotating rotor, we will have to consider R2 dash divided by 2 minus S. But when S is equal to 1, both the quantities will be the same. That is R2 dash itself and it is taken as R2 dash divided by 2 because we have considered as two separate rotates of the same parameters R2 divided by 2 and X2 divided by 2. Once a machine gets started it will be operating as single phase induction motor itself. We will see the starting mechanisms later and when it is operating at a particular speed, there will not be any auxiliary winding which is used for the starting purpose. Now we will be considering the slips of forward rotating rotor and the backward rotating rotor that is S and 2 minus S respectively and for the parameters that are referred to the stator that is the resistance of the rotor will have to be considered along with the corresponding slips. Forward rotating rotor, we have R2 dash divided by 2S and for backward rotating rotor, R2 dash divided by 2 into 2 minus S. Now we will be considering the test by which we can find out the parameters of equivalent circuit in the case of single phase induction motor. The first one is block rotor test that is similar to the block rotor test that we had in the case of three phase induction motor. The connection diagram is shown in the figure. The rotor will be prevented from rotating or it will be held at standstill condition itself. The auto transformer will be adjusted in order to inject the rated current through the winding of the machine. Since the rotor is at rest, we can consider the slip is equal to 1. And at block rotor condition, it requires only very less amount of voltage to be applied for circulating the rated current. And because of the same, the magnetizing and working current are very small. And we can neglect the excitation branches for forward field and backward field. The corresponding equivalent circuit is shown in the figure. We have the readings from the block rotor test as VSC, the voltage applied, ISC, the current that is passing through and WSC, the watt meter reading. What will be the reading on the watt meter will be the total copper loss for the rated current. Total resistance referred to 
the stator side that is given as RSC is equal to R1 plus R2 dot that can be obtained from WSC and ISC that is RSC is equal to WSC divided by ISC square. We have the copper loss as I squared R. And by finding RSC, we can find out what is R2 dash. We can separately measure the resistance of the stator winding by voltage current method. So R2 dash is equal to RSC minus R1. And we have the equation ZSC is equal to VSC divided by ISC. We can find out XSC is equal to root of ZSC square minus RSC square. And we have XSC is equal to X1 plus X2 dash. And if we assume X1 is equal to X2 dash, we can rewrite it as x1 is equal to x2 dash is equal to xsc divided by 2. The second test that we will have to conduct in order to get the equivalent circuit parameter is no-load test. It is same as that of the no-load test we have for the three-phase induction motor or in the case of the transformer. The circuit corresponding to no-load test is given. We will be applying the rated voltage by adjusting the auto transformer and the machine will be at no-load condition. At this condition, since it is at no-load, the slip will be very small and the time R2 dash divided by 2s will be very high and can be omitted. That is the load circuit for the four-wheel field can be omitted. But in the circuit corresponding to the backward field, the time R2 dash divided by 2 into 2 minus S. Since the slip is very less, we can write this R2 dash divided by 4. And the time is also very small. And the parallel excitation branch can be omitted in this case, considering an approximation. So the equivalent circuit for the no-load condition is also given in the figure where we have considered the parallel branch corresponding to the backward field is omitted and the parameters corresponding to the forward field is also omitted and the parallel branch corresponding to the forward field and the parallel branch corresponding to the backward field are taken in series. Let the readings obtained from no-load test be W0, V1 and I0. W0 the wattmeter reading, V1 the voltage applied and I0 the no-load current. We can find the no-load power factor cos phi 0 is equal to W0 divided by V1 I0 because we have the equation W0 is equal to V1 I0 cos phi 0. By subtracting the copper loss from the no load input, we can find out the stray loss for the machine. That is, WF is equal to W0 minus I0 square into R1 plus R2 dash divided by 4. We can find out the voltage across the excitation branch for the four-wheel field as Vf and the equation is given. By knowing the voltage, we can find out the admittance of the excitation branch that is for the forward field as Yf and from the equations we can find out the parameter Xm. And the final equivalent circuit is shown in the figure. In order to find out the equivalent circuit and the corresponding parameters of a single phase induction motor. We will have to conduct three tests that is block rotor test, no load test and the stator resistance test in order to find out R1. So in this section 
we are discussing the equivalent circuit of a single phase induction motor how the parameters can be found out from different tests what is meant by double revolving field theory hope you have understood thank you